Hello everyone and welcome to worship. My name is Leslie Shalotme. I'm the Director of Discipleship and Service here at Webster Hills and we are so very glad you could join us online today. Well there are two things that you'll need to get ready for worship. The first is go ahead and collect your items you may need for communion. Take a moment and grab some bread and water or some chips and juice, whatever you may have available. Second, get ready to light your Advent candle. Well the second week of Advent we're talking all about love. The Christmas story makes it clear that when God moves in our lives, we may not fully understand, even see what is happening. But two women, both unexpectedly pregnant, were witnesses to God's miraculous actions. The reason this was all happening was because of God's great love for humanity. See, Christmas is a powerful expression of God's love. And this Christmas, perhaps we can join Mary and Elizabeth and recognizing that love and rejoicing in it. We'll take a moment and click on the worship resources in the comments. Make sure to fill out the connect card. We'd love to know that you worship with us. You can also find a place to give, find out the next steps, and join us online during the week at Webster Hills Online for more discussion. Make sure to click the share button, and it's the easiest way to invite someone to church with you. See you all soon, Webster Hills. Welcome to worship. Let's light our Advent candles as we start together. Waiting is hard in a fast-paced society. We want the stoplight to change quickly, the grocery line to move faster, and Christmas morning to arrive soon. We forget that before good things happen, preparations have to be made. Last week we lit the hope candle and remembered those who first spoke the promise of the coming Christ child. The second candle we will light is the candle of love, it is a symbol of the preparations being made to receive and cradle the Christ child. Two candles burning bright, chasing away the darkness from light. Two candles glowing light, the blessing of God giving new sight. Amen. Prepare the way, make straight the path for him. Let the King of glory enter in. Let the King of glory enter in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong.
for him. Let the King of glory enter in. Let the King of glory enter in. Who is this King? Let the King of glory enter in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty to save. His earth, His kingdom's glory, creation calls. Prepare the way His love endureth forever His power is without an end His strength is victory's treasure Let all who call His name Prepare the way Hello friends, I'm Kyle. And I'm Malaysia. And I'm so glad you're joining us for our children's moment this morning. Friends, today we're talking about the second week of Advent, the word love. Elijah, when you think of the word love, what do you think of? I think of love is every, caring about everybody else. Yeah, showing care for everyone. And in our story today, Mary goes to Elizabeth to share the news that she is carrying baby Jesus and finds out that Elizabeth is also carrying a baby. And the beautiful thing in this relationship is the love they have, though they are generations apart, which is so cool. Elijah, do you have anybody older than you, maybe a lot older than you, that you really enjoy spending time with? My, my aunts. And your aunts and uncles and your family members. Yes. And your Nana, mm -hmm. right? And one of my favorite pictures and spent time together is this picture right here. And it's of my family, all the grandchildren, my grandpa, and all the great-grandchildren together. And I love this picture because it shows the love of many generations, that it's not just about being friends and showing love to people that are the same age or at the same stage of life as you, but it's coming together as family, as friends, and showing that love from generation to generation. So friends, today, I want to challenge you. Write down in the comments someone you love, someone that you know that's older than you and you have a special relationship, and share what you like to do with that person. We look forward to seeing those comments. Now, let's thank God for the beautiful relationships we have in various generations. Let's pray. God, we thank you that friendships span beyond age, that we can show love to one another, whether we're the same age, older, younger, you show as an example through Mary and Elizabeth's relationship that generations that differ can show love and kindness and have friendship in a very special way. Help us to show that kind of love everywhere we go this holiday season. In Jesus' name, amen.
right now, at the very beginning of this message, I am going to tell you that the story that I want to share with you, it's a strange choice. It's a strange choice for a sermon and a really strange choice for an Advent sermon. But the story comes from the Netflix series Midnight Mass. And it's a strange choice because Midnight Mass contains a lot of material that's terrifying. So unless you're someone who really, really loves uh, stories and shows that are based in everything that's scary about the real world or about the world of our imaginations, then I don't necessarily recommend the series. But at the same time, the series really does offer a lot to consider when it comes to faith and how we practice our faith, the ways we live it out in our everyday lives. So I want to tell you about one particular character in the series. Her name is Bev. Now, if you've ever been part of a group, if you've ever been part of any kind of a group, there's a really, really good chance that someone in that group played the role of Bev. In the series, Bev is part of a small Catholic church on a fairly remote island. It's a fishing village, and she serves faithfully. She is there every time the doors are opened. She organizes things. She cleans things. And then every week she serves as a worship leader. She helps lead the songs and she reads scriptures. So Bev sounds pretty cool, right? I mean, who wouldn't want a Bev as part of their church or or any other group? She gets things done. Bev also has a very highly developed sense of what is right and what is wrong. And in her way of thinking, some things can only be certain ways, especially when it comes to the church. And as she lives into this way of thinking, she also begins to make some judgments. She decides, at, at least to herself, and then sometimes in an outward way, who is worthy and who is not worthy, who should live and who should die. Remember, this is a horror story. She makes decisions about who should be saved and who should continue to suffer. Much of Bev's way of looking at the world is tied up in a a sense of shame. And we don't really know why it is that it's this way with her, but, but when she begins to size someone up, she often considers whether they ought to live um, and be shamed for their choices in the, all the ways that they lived. And then it also then goes without saying that for Bev, a lot of people in her world, she thinks, are not without shame. Now, the ending of the story, again, filled with horrific images, but it does allow you to ask some questions. What would I do if I was on the outside and I wanted to be on the inside? What would I do if I got to be the one who gets to choose who is kept out and who is able to come in? What do I do? How do I wrestle with making the right choices, especially when the obviously wrong choice is the one that offers the most immediate relief. Now, what does any of that have to do with Advent and the approach of Christmas? Well, it's quite possible that if Bev had met Mary or Elizabeth outside of Scripture, then she would have put them in the category of people who just ought to be ashamed of themselves, people who did not belong in polite society. So we're working our way through the story of the birth of Jesus as told in the Gospel of Luke. And Luke begins not with Mary and the appearance of the angel, but with an older priest named Zechariah. Zechariah is the first to encounter an angel in this Gospel story. And this angel tells him that his wife is going to give birth to a son. And that is startling news because both Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth They're older. They are well past childbearing age. The angel tells the priest that the child, a son, will go forth before the Lord, equipped with the spirit and power of Elijah, and that he will make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now, we know that this child will become John the Baptist, and indeed, he will become a roving preacher. He'll announce that Jesus is coming. He'll baptize Jesus, and then he'll join Jesus in his ministry. But Zechariah is not immediately convinced, and he questions the angel and then loses his ability to speak for at least as long as the pregnancy continues. So shame comes into this story in a couple of different ways. First of all, there's Elizabeth. Not only is she past childbearing age, she has not been able to have a child at all. And in that day, in that culture, a woman who could not produce a baby 
Well, she just didn't measure up. She was less than. Now, she was still the wife of a priest, so that helped. But you know in the town square, don't you, when the women gathered at the well, there was talk, there was whispering, there was judgment, there were Bevs. And then there's Zechariah, who we don't know how publicly they shared the story or kept it to themselves, but all of a sudden this priest can't speak. And if disease or affliction was the result of a bad life choice, well, once again, there's going to be judgment. And then finally, we'll bring Mary into the story. Mary is an unmarried woman. Now she's pregnant. And that results in more judgment. So Elizabeth does become pregnant, kind of a miracle. Then she, a month later, six months later, her younger cousin Mary is also pregnant. That's an even bigger miracle. And as the story in Luke continues, we find Mary heading out on a journey of about 80 miles or so to visit her relative Elizabeth. This was right after the angel had visited Mary. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. So that's the story as Mary greets Elizabeth. And as you listen to that part of scripture, do you hear any hint of shame, judgment? No. Elizabeth greets the younger woman without any hesitation, welcomes her into her home, calls her blessed. Three times she tells Mary that she is blessed. And then Mary responds with confidence. The confidence of someone who knows that God has asked something of her, something that she has agreed to take on, something that will lift up those who live in shame and call out those who are too willing to stand in judgment. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. And he has filled the hungry with good things and, and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. So Mary's response, as she is welcomed by Elizabeth, is often referred to as Mary's song or the Magnificat. It takes the, the birth that she is expecting and pushes it into the future now. And Mary sings of what the Lord has done by deciding that God will enter into humanity in a different way. God taking on human flesh, God incarnate, God with us, God who is acting out of his love for us. Just listen for the ways Mary describes what God is doing. God looks with favor on the lowly, acts with mercy, scatters the proud, fills the hungry, sends the rich away, remembers promises made. Mary's song is a song that bursts with the news that the God who is coming, the God who will be born in a stable in Bethlehem is a God who loves. The God who is coming, born as Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, is a God who wants the world to know that it's possible to shake off shame. That the judgment that the world so often hands us is not the final answer for our lives. 
And this God also wants to speak to those of us who more often than we would want to admit are like Bev, just a little too ready to see the mistakes that others make, a little too ready to judge, a little too willing to decide who gets to come in and who has to stay out. We too are in line for God's loving mercy. Even before his birth, we can begin to see what God wants to bring to the world through Jesus, and that is love without shame, love without judgment, love that lifts up the lowly and fills and feeds the hungry, love that has no room for pride, no room for clinging to wealth, love that heals, reconciles, forgives. And so this Advent, may we be more like Elizabeth and Mary and less like Bev, trusting that God is, is coming to save us and free us. May we open our doors and our hearts to those who have been shamed and stand in shame. And may we also, because we know that God takes away our shame, may our souls magnify the Lord and may our spirits rejoice in God, our Savior. Amen. The peace and presence of the Lord is with us, and so we lift up our hearts. We lift them up to God. We are called, in all times and in all places, to give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We thank you, Creator God, that you made us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, you reached out to us again and again, providing healing, wholeness, and new life. When the flood came, you provided an ark. When plagues came, you provided safety. When evening came, you provided a pillar of fire. When exile came, you provided a new song. Throughout time and even today, your love has remained steadfast. And so with your people on earth and with all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is your Son who came to preach the good news to the poor, release to the captives, and the recovery of sight to the blind. He freed the oppressed and announced that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick and is healing even now. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us be a community of healers and hope givers, as together we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And now let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The bread reminds us that any life, no matter how broken or sick or distorted it may become, can be made whole once again. The cup reminds us that any life, no matter how empty or lonely or isolated it may become, can be filled once again. These are the gifts of God given for you, the people, the family of God. Let all God's people say, thanks be to God. 
I invite you to prayerfully partake in Holy Communion by whatever means you have. Hello, Webster Hills family. My name is Chloe McClanahan, and I am a member of the Webster Hills UMC Serve Team. As we prepare for the celebration of Jesus' birth, I'd like to highlight that Jesus' very existence was the ultimate gift of love from God. This gift of Jesus' love from God provided us with an unlimited capacity to love others. It may be helpful to think of Jesus' time on earth as an instruction manual on how to use our capacity to love. Our serve team has created a new opportunity to follow Jesus' instructions to love others through service. We will be launching a Freedom School Summer Literacy Program for local 6th to 8th grade students in 2022. Freedom School plays a much needed role in helping to curb summer learning loss and close achievement gaps by providing reading enrichment for children. The staff, leadership board, and serve team are excited about this new ministry. The ministry provides a huge opportunity to love and serve children outside our doors and fill a real need for our local neighborhood. For our congregation, it creates a cornerstone mission that can focus our energies and talents and make a life-changing impact on children and families. There are many ways to give and support the Cornerstone Mission Project, from buying a meal to sponsoring a child for the summer. There is a way for you to get involved. You can give by clicking the link in the comments of this video. Make sure to select Christmas Eve offering. Thank you so much for your support of the children and families of Freedom School and going above and beyond your regular offering. Have a very Merry Christmas, Webster Hills. Hello, it's time for Next Steps, a time to talk about how we can connect and take our next steps in faith. Well, today we have a few announcements and some steps you can take to join us on this Advent journey. First, make sure that you've picked up your Advent bag. If you or a family member still need one, please let us know. I'd be happy to mail you one. Text Advent Bag to the number on the screen or in the comments. Join us for our first ever event of the season, Elf Extravaganza. You'll not want to miss this night. Packed with fun, cookie making, games, watching Elf, and eating some spaghetti with syrup on top. We would love to have you and your family join us. It'll be today at 4.30. Well, everyone, have a magnificent week. See you soon.